Hello everyone. In this video, I will show how to create nodes and elements. First, I will turn on the option to show node and element IDs. The creation of nodes can be done through this auxiliary window where you have to provide the coordinates of the node you want to create. In this case of a 2D frame, the Z coordinate is fixed to zero. By clicking the create button, the new node will be added to the model and listed in the table below. The ID numbers are assigned in the order of creation. And to delete a node, you have to select its ID from the drop-down list and click the delete button. The IDs of the remaining nodes are rearranged to avoid gaps between consecutive numbers. Another way to add nodes is through mouse insertion using the toolbar. This is only possible for 2D and grillage models, not for 3D. Here you have a, a snap to grid option to assist the node insertion. Also, if you click on a node, you can remove it with this delete button in the toolbar. The keyboard shortcut for doing this is the delete key. The toolbar options were explained in another video tutorial, so I recommend you to watch it. In addition, when you click on a node, you can check its ID and coordinates from the information table. The creation and elimination of elements can also be done with the mouse using the toolbar options, as it was explained in the other tutorial for the toolbar. However, when inserting elements with the mouse, these elements are created with default properties. To change these properties or to create elements with more control of their properties, you can access the auxiliary dialog window for elements. Just like materials, cross sections and nodes, you have to set the properties of the element you want to create and you have a table of the created elements at the bottom. In the connectivity box, the IDs of the initial and final nodes must be set from these drop-downs that list the graded nodes, and also the type of connectivity for the initial and final joints. They can be continuous, hinged, or semi-rigid. The semi-rigid connection requires the values of the stiffness for the rotation about the local directions of the element, in this case of a 2D frame, the only rotation is about the Z direction, which is the out of plane direction. But in the case of a 3D frame or a grillage, you can have rotations around the X and Y directions. So these other fields would be enabled. The local directions or axis of the element are specified in the box right below it. First of all, the local X axis is always the longitudinal direction of the element from the first to the second node. On flat models, which include 2D models and grillage, the local Z and Y axis are automatically set and you cannot change it. The local Z axis is the out of plane direction, which is factor 001. And the local Y axis has only one possible direction which is perpendicular to the element. In the case of 3D models, you can change these local directions by setting an auxiliary vector in the local XZ plane. In the description of the video, I'll leave uh, the links to the old manuals of the program where you can find detailed explanation about this auxiliary vector and how to set it. In the view menu, there is an option to show the orientation of the elements so if you activate it, you can see the local axis of each element. Back to the auxiliary window, in the box of physical properties, the material and cross section are selected according to their ID numbers. Then we have some options to define the deformability of the element. Currently, the only option available is the checkbox for shear deformation. When it's off, it means that the element formulation does not consider the shear deformation during bending and the element is said to be Navier type. 
also known as Euler Bernoulli. And when this option is turned on, the shear deformation is taken into account and the element is said to be Timochenko type. The other two deformability options cannot be turned off because rigid elements have not yet been implemented in the program. So all elements must account for axial and flexural deformations. Finally, the last option is whether or not to include the element mass in the mass matrix of the structure. This option only affects uh, dynamic analysis. Then you can click the create button to add an element with these properties to the model. You can delete the element indicated by the ID number selected in this dropdown. And you can also edit some properties of the existing elements. Not all properties can be edited. For example, the end nodes cannot change. And after changing the property, you need to click the apply button to confirm it. And there is also an option to apply the modification of one element to multiple elements. Information about clicked elements can be checked or edited through these tables at the bottom of the main interface. After changing something, you need to press apply to confirm it. And that's all for this video.